Hey guys, this is Jared with Data Medics again. Uh, so today I'm going to show you one of the most common types of data recovery cases that we see here at our lab. Uh, this is what's commonly referred to as the Western Digital Slow Responding Bug. Uh, and this is actually one that's very easy. Uh, PC3000 has uh, pretty much automated all these solutions. It's no longer as challenging as it was some years ago to implement the solution to fix this. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you. Now this is a case that just came into our office uh, earlier today. Uh, I already checked it out and I can see it's a classic Western Digital slow responding bug. So I'm going to kind of show you um, what that does, how you can recognize that problem. Then I'm going to show you how we can fix that problem as well as how we can decrypt the data to be able to get usable data off of this drive. Now this was from a uh, Western Digital my, uh, my book that was dropped. Uh, it stopped working but the drive is not clicking. Uh, it sounds normal and everything but it just doesn't seem to respond when it's connected to a computer. So as you can see when we power the drive on we have the uh, send and receive lights are on so the drive is in a ready state. Go ahead and hit the auto detect. It detects as Western Digital Marvel. So we're going to go ahead and launch the utility. Now you're going to notice as we launch this utility, we're going to see a lot of delays where this busy light is going to go on. So we detect the family. Notice a little bit of a delay there. So it detects a saddle G6 family. And this may take a few minutes now. Uh, with some drives, this may actually hang for even several minutes. Uh, this one is marginally slow, but I've certainly seen a lot slower at times. Um, with some of the really bad cases, we actually have to go in and block access to the service area in ROM so as to actually be able to get uh, in there to fix it because they simply become unresponsive as they get slower and slower as uh, this problem develops. Now this problem is generally triggered by bad sectors. Uh, often what happens is these drives get bad sectors both in the service area. As we can see, we have uh, one service area defect assigned on this drive. Uh, but also what happens is as the drive tries to reallocate things, uh, the the G list gets overfilled, the drive is no longer able to reallocate sectors, and it essentially just stops functioning. Now if we go to try to make a backup of the service area on this drive, uh, we're going to see here just how slow this hard drive is going to respond. Uh, you know, normally we'd see you know, these different RAM modules being backed up uh, rather quickly, but as we can see here, it's just one at a time, this long delays trying to back up each of these modules. So this is a classic a telltale sign of the Western Digital slow responding bug. And if we were to load up a task in Data Extractor, try to copy this drive right now, we'd be probably getting read speeds around a few kilobytes a second rather than 100 megabytes or something we should, would expect to get. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop this backup process because this will take forever and we don't want to stress the drive at this point since there's really no need to. Uh, what I'm going to do is just for the sake of uh, backing up the modules that will be modified, I'm just going to go ahead and back up a couple of modules here. Uh, so I'm just going to deselect all. I'm just going to select modules 2 and 32 because those are the two modules that will be modified in this process. So we're just going to go ahead and make a backup of those two copies. This may take a moment. Okay, so the two backed up. So now PC3000 makes this very quick. Uh, it's just a single option, solve slow responding problem. Go ahead and select that. Uh, it's going to go ahead and read those modules a second time. I like to have two backups, which is why I do it. Uh, you can generally leave everything set as it is. Keep it set to writing by ABA, copy one. Uh, you could leave copy one unchecked or check it if you'd like. Um, I like to leave it unchecked just so if something really goes awry here, there's a backup copy of the original modules on the drive as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. Uh, this may take a moment. OK, and then you get this little message that it needs to be switched power off and on to restart hard drive. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Just power the drive off. Power it back on. We'll wait for it to come to a ready state again. Okay, so now that the drive is in a ready state, uh, let's go ahead and try backing up all the resources again, and let's notice the difference in speed this time. So as we can see now, uh, it's backing up modules many times faster uh, than it was before. It's no longer one module every 30 seconds, but it's going through several hundred of them within just a few seconds. So we'll go ahead and let this finish. And then we're going to move to this next step, which is to determine the decryption on these drives. Okay. 
Okay, so since we got a good backup of all of the modules, I'm not going to bother to back up the tracks. Um, if we had problems with some of the modules, then I might go and read tracks by uh, composite read, but we, we can go ahead and stop this now. There's really no, no need for those tracks in a case like this. So now if we go to the Sector Edit tab, uh, we're going to notice that this data is encrypted. Now how we can tell it's encrypted, if we look at these three lines right here, we notice this repeating pattern. If you, if you look here, you kind of just see this same repeating pattern, and then we see it again down here. And what this is indicative of is the area where there would be all zeros, but because the same group of all zeros is being encrypted using the same key, we end up with this sort of repeating pattern. It'll always be different depending on what the encryption key is, which is randomly generated. But as we can see, this same pattern, uh, this is where there would normally be zeros in the master boot record. And we also see it doesn't have the normal 55AA ending signature that we would always see on a master boot record in those last two uh, bits, uh, last two bytes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the little settings tab here, check this box that says decrypt data, and then we just press auto detect. And on most uh, drives, unless it's something super new, it'll just take a few seconds, it'll check the different copies of the service area, it'll check the key sector near the ending LBAs of the drive. And as we can see, it's determined an encryption type. It's in an OK state. There's no user password set. So we're just going to go ahead and click OK. Click OK. And as we can see now, this looks like a normal master boot record. We see this uh, English message here about partition error loading operating system, missing operating system, and the usual 55AA closing signature of the master boot record. So now we know this data is now decrypted. Now, if we look at the next sector, now it, this looks like encrypted data, but that's only because this was zeros that was never written with encrypted data in the first place. So this now looks good. The encryption is correct. So now we can know, now we know we can move on to the imaging stage. So if we go ahead, switch over now to data extractor. So I'm just going to go ahead and set a job number for this task. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is set up the decryption again. So we'll go ahead and go to the parameters, go to command to read, and check the decryption box. It's already auto-detected from the, the Western Digital Utility, so we just go ahead and press OK. If we leave that at UDMA 133. Um, I like to turn my read timeouts down for Western Digital Drives. I just find the image a little more stable if we keep the read timeout lower. Uh, I'm just going to check a few things here. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and apply that. Uh, we'll just go ahead and check sector zero again, make sure it decrypts properly. And as we can see, it has. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and build a head map. Should just take a moment. I'll go ahead and pause the video for a moment. Okay, so building our head map just finished up. So we now can see the head map had 0 through 5. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just start this imaging and see how it goes. And it's like no for that. As you can see, these boxes are now the dark green color rather than the light green. Uh, that shows that the data has been encrypted. So I'm not going to show uh, what the file tree looks like, but I can, uh, I'm certain if we open up the Explorer here, we'll actually be able to see the data. But since this is a real case, um, I can't really show you that. This is confidential information. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, that's the basics of how to decrypt data with these Western Digital uh, from the My Passport or My Book external hard drives, and as well how to fix the Western Digital slow responding uh, problem. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our website, www.datamedics-medics.com. Uh, <laughs> www Thanks.